Hi, I'm Lori Dobson, and this is Island Update. And today is Sunday, May 17th, 2020, and I'm on the island of Great Cranberry in Maine. And I just finished taking a walk with Bob and our two dogs. Had a really nice walk. A little chilly, so, you know, Velk, you know, we still wear a lot of fleece year-round here. And although it was nice, it's you know once you start stop walking it you know you need to put put on some cover. Um, but other than that, it's it's starting uh, like I was talking about the other day. It's starting in earnest. The apple tree here, the um, the garden um, the garden has been hit by deer, so you can see the tops of my arborvitaes. Those strange things have been hit by uh, by deer, so I'm. Um, we got a couple new arborvitaes. We're going to start them alongside and help them out and figure out how to keep the deer a little distracted. And um, we did get a lot of wonderful things from the um, from off island, and uh, we put them on the porch here. They're going to be planting today and uh, painting beehives. Uh, beehives coming up soon. I have a lot of stuff on the porch here that is uh, packed away, ready to go back into the uh, boathouse which is the uh, island, uh, it's a resale, antiques, and more kind of a, um, a location that I got going and moved over to, midway in the summer, moved over to the former ladies' aid barn that got turned into a chicken coop that's across next to the library. And uh, <clears throat> so that will be moved, and then it, it uh, seems that we will be relocating again back in there. We got it all cleaned out. So in the meantime, I've got I've got people's consignment stuff ready and waiting. I'm also going to probably do a um, a porch sale, a tag sale once we get organized here. Set some stuff out next weekend. I'm thinking about that may happen. Uh, it all is dependent on how productive we can be. So I'm just going to show you how nice these flowers are that we got and all the bee making material beehive making materials that we are going to be painting and getting up and putting in the field it's going to be awesome the dogs are sitting on the on the front steps and relaxing oh, so we're kind of gearing up for the next shift in the summer <laughs> it's um summer to come this spring but it's um it's going to be happening. It's time for annuals. It's time for flowers and, you know, not just to be thinking about what we're going to do, but be able to actually do things, shift into go mode. It's been, everybody's been that way. And so, you know, when we, when we finally have a chance to act, it's kind of, you know, you want to get out there and get things done. But I think this, this time we've had to, to do these things, you know, I, I was able to start a video, <laughs> which normally I wouldn't have time for in the spring. And I've appreciated it because it's been a it's been an opportunity to talk about things that matter, you know, matter to me and things I see around us. And, you know, we're getting to where like this pear tree is now blooming. It's got some blooms coming out today. And, you know, when when you start getting encouragement from nature, it's it's uh, it's, it's a relief. It's like, yes, the universe is going to let us have another spring. You know, we're we're human. Human races survive to another, to another May. Might even get to June with any luck. So I just wanted to talk today about. Um, I had it in mind to talk about scarcity of resources and how people are about that, and how people are about. Uh, and on islands, you know the familiarity. What is it? Distance lends enchantment, familiarity breeds contempt. You know, there's a lot of mottos that talk about natural things that we tend to fall into as behavior patterns. Uh, our uniqueness on Great Cranberry is that we have a, a sister island called Little Cranberry, uh, or also known as Islesford. And there are three other islands, Baker, Bear, and Sutton, that make the five island connection of town. Uh, we're all one township called Cranberry Isles. It's kind of unusual, um, but the one that we deal with the most is is little cranberry. It kind of um, thinking about how people are, human beings are. I was just immediately thinking the other this morning about the Cuomos, you know, the brothers 
they 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 profess to love each other but they uh they they um definitely have a um a sparring kind of relationship i think knowing my own family with two younger sisters it can feel that uh as the oldest that you're contending with uh um certain elemental forces you know that are are in competition sometimes and uh, it doesn't need to be that way, but it can be seen that way. We have two dogs and, you know, they, when, when it, um, two sisters, two sister dachshunds, when it, in, you know, when it's in their interest and they have the security, they can be feisty with each other. But when we're on a walk and there's a, like an osprey circling overhead, looking at them like they're the next meal, you know, I think they recognize it, it uh, flying together and not creating familial issues, you know. It's important to to be connected and, and tight. Um, you know, they like to sometimes walk next to each other, uh, poop next to each other, just to strengthen the smell and the the idea that they're stronger together. And uh, so the nature of islands is, is a little different. And um, I've seen that because we don't seem to have a common vision, you know, a comprehensive town plan really needs to be updated so that we all see are common interests. Common interests are sometimes hard to see, like when you're, when you see yourself as a sister island, which I sort of think we are, you can sort of maximize your, your, your similarities or you can maximize your differences depending on your outlook. And I think it's important that if we're gonna see our common threat uh, to our future out here, which is our island viability, that we would do better if we worked together to uh, address that. And sometimes it's just easier to sort of say, well, I've got these resources and you've got those resources. You know, this, um, uh, it, it doesn't, it's not as humorous as the Cuomo brothers and certainly with the COVID thing, it's, uh, it's you know, humor has been a, a scarce resource, but I think we, we need to aim towards a common uh, understanding of what we're about. And then when you can do that, like with my sisters, when we can all understand, you know, that our common interest is in caring for our mom and for our kids and for our families, and it would be nice also to consider our sister affections towards each other and understandings. Sometimes it's hard to understand somebody when you've got intensity of feeling, like when I'm, my dog died, you know, I don't think my sisters realize, have any idea how much that dog meant to me. Uh, but I'm, I'm veering off into family land. But we need to take time to hear what matters. And uh, so I was really happy when the, the beginning of all this, the selectmen were having meetings where we would talk. And uh, gosh, if we could do that without sensing that one island is going to tell the other island what to do. You know, we're, we're going to now have some um, cameras that are going to be focused on our dock, which we've all agreed to do, but it seems a little uneasy knowing that one island can kind of have the means to look at the dock on another island at all times and see what's going on. It's, you know, it's a privacy thing, and maybe I'm the only person on either island that that bothers, and I voted to, to support the idea at the town meeting. But there's also other things, you know, um, you know, like we have a property in common that we're all paying for, Manset, and if that um, if that gets used to just support one island and they're a business on that island, you know, the Fisherman's Co-op, for example, I mean, does that help everybody? How does that help us? And, and if we could understand why we do things, like one island's person telling us here one car at a time on the dock, um, if, if, if rules just come down from on high, and so, you know, with people that have authority, and well-meaning people that, that are doing something that probably everybody could understand and get behind. If we don't skip steps and we really do what, what I'm trained to do in land use, I was a land use professional for years, the, the idea is to build public consensus. You can't avoid having people get together and try to, try to, agree, get, to get to a point of agreement. There are people that, that have done that helping us uh, Lindsay Eisnagel is, is, is good at that. She helped us with our church mission. And we also had somebody else helping us uh, from the Island Institute. Karen Burns, our Futures Group, had a mission 
uh, organized organized mission uh, effort. And I think it would be really good for our islands to know what our mission is going forward. I mean, you know, I think every island or set of islands or any anywhere you have r r treasured resources that are under threat, are they under threat? What's our real, what are our real resources? If we got real clear, we consider, personal, first of all, our, our island people, you know, and then, and then we consider the value of keeping a, um, keeping us all viably uh, occupied and, and employed. Uh, how do we feel about day trippers coming in? How do we feel about renters or about seasonal people or people that live nearby and come and come and go how, uh, year rounders? How do we keep everybody here working together? It's a, it's a real skill. And I, I have seen it work better. I've been part of places where it has worked better. I have participated on planning boards where the interests are just completely corrupted by, by, by those with an interest, a moneyed interest, and they want to maximize their personal enrichment. You know, there's all kinds of ways you can threaten an island, and one of them is not being really diligent about your, your, um, how, you, how you break it out, who represents you. And we have to be willing to deal with those issues. And right now it's been a hands-off because, you know, a lot of the government stuff is happening on the other island, but we have interests here that must be spoken for and represented. So I guess I'm saying Great Cranberry, uh, you know, I'm, I've been pretty out there talking about this, but I hope that coming coming in the days and months ahead, you know, other, other folks here have been doing a lot to get this island going. Uh, Chris White and David Staten, who's no longer here, and Oren uh, uh, Roberts, I think, yes, was uh, Owen, Ro sorry, Owen Ro Roberts, was, uh, were, they were instrumental in getting the Futures Group going. And that's a really good organization. And uh, would it be great to get some people, it, you know, putting an input in for us, because we need to keep going with our mission, understanding what it is and um, how to represent the islands. So all of us need to get involved in that, I think, and not be afraid to have a reaction. I just want to say from my own personal experience, you could survive the negativity. It's just people uh, are resistant initially to change. But you, if you can get them to think, question their own beliefs, uh, learn from an ex a different a different perspective, I think we all benefit. And I have as much to learn as anybody. So I welcome, I welcome discourse, dispute if it's courteous, but in general, just talking is great with everyone. Take care, guys. Have a great day. Bye.